Have you ever heard that we only use 10% of our brain? This myth is present in movies, books, and even everyday conversations. But is it true? I will show you the origin of this intriguing myth and how the brain really works, changing the way you see your own brain. We will analyze scientific discoveries and understand why this idea persists to this day. Origin of the myth. The 10% brain myth has its roots in the early 20th century. It is often attributed to psychologist William James or neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield. But there is no concrete evidence that they actually propagated this idea. This notion likely arose from a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of early brain studies. Some thinkers and scientists of the time mentioned that only a small part of the brain seemed to be involved in conscious tasks, which might have been misinterpreted as, we only use 10% of our brain. In reality, the brain is a complex machine and all its parts have important functions, even if we are not always aware of them. Over decades, this notion has spread and taken root in popular culture, despite being scientifically incorrect. The human brain. To understand why the myth doesn't make sense, we need to know how the brain really works. The brain is divided into several regions, each with specific functions, and all are active at different times. For example, the prefrontal cortex is involved in executive functions and decision-making, while the cerebellum coordinates movements and balance. Even during sleep, our brain is busy processing information, consolidating memories, and performing vital maintenance tasks. All these activities are essential for our survival and well-being demonstrating that we use virtually all parts of our brain to some degree. Therefore, the idea that only 10% of the brain is used simply does not hold up to current scientific knowledge. Our brain is incredibly efficient and adaptable, using various areas in a coordinated manner to ensure our daily functioning. Neuroimaging, technologies like functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, show that practically all areas of the brain have some level of activity, even during simple tasks or at rest. These scans allow us to visualize brain activity in real time, highlighting that there are no inactive regions in a healthy brain. When a person is at rest, areas responsible for automatic functions like breathing, circulation and hormonal functions continue to operate. When we perform complex tasks, various brain areas work together, each contributing its specializations. For example, reading a book involves activating areas responsible for vision, language, memory, and comprehension. These neuroimaging data provide a clear and detailed view of how the human brain is in constant activity debunking the myth that only a small part is utilized. Thus, neuroimaging reveals a fully functioning and entirely active brain. Neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself throughout life, forming new synaptic connections in response to experiences, learning, and even injuries. This means that the brain is always changing and adapting using different areas as needed. For example, when we learn a new skill, like playing a musical instrument, the brain creates and strengthens connections between neurons in areas involved in motor control, hearing and memory. This continuous process of adaptation and change is further proof that we use much more than just 10% of our brain. Neural plasticity is also crucial for injury recovery where brain areas can take over functions from damaged regions, further highlighting the vast capacity and utilization of the human brain. This feature of continuous and flexible adaptation demonstrates the complexity and efficiency of our brain's capabilities. Brain injuries. If we really only use 10% of our brain, injuries to other parts would have no impact. However, 
damage to any part of the brain can cause significant deficits. For example, a stroke can affect areas responsible for speech, movement or memory, depending on the region affected. These consequences indicate that all parts of the brain have important functions. Injuries to the frontal lobe can affect behavior and decision-making, while damage to the occipital lobe can compromise vision. The complexity and interconnectivity of brain functions show that we use much more than just a small fraction of our brain. Case studies of brain injuries reveal the critical importance of each region, demonstrating that the idea that we use only 10% is, in fact, a myth. Medical reports and clinical observations reinforce the importance of every millimetre of brain tissue, proving that our brain operates at full capacity. Brain efficiency. The brain is extremely efficient and specialised. Different regions work together to perform complex tasks, which would be impossible if we only use 10% of it. Each area of the brain is responsible for specific functions, such as sensory information processing, motor control, emotion, and logical reasoning. This division of labor allows the brain to operate optimally, allocating resources as needed for distinct tasks. Additionally, the brain consumes about 20% of the body's total energy, despite representing only 2% of body weight indicating how much activity is continuously happening. This energy efficiency reflects the constant use of multiple brain areas, whether for simple or complex tasks. Therefore, the idea of underutilizing the brain does not correspond to the reality of brain functioning. Our mind works like a well-tuned orchestra, with each area contributing harmoniously and essentially. Debunking the myth, numerous scientific studies show that the brain is almost always active. Scientists have been debunking this myth for decades, but it continues to persist. For example, neuroscience research shows that there are no inactive areas in the brain. Even during sleep, the brain performs a series of vital functions, such as memory consolidation and regulation of bodily functions. Additionally, the development of techniques such as electroencephalography EEG, and positron emission tomography PET, provides additional evidence of extensive and constant brain activity. Analysis of these data reveals a picture of robust and comprehensive brain activity, completely disproving the notion that we use only 10% of our brain capacity. These studies highlight the brain's complexity and incessant activity, reinforcing the importance of debunking erroneous concepts and valuing our cognitive potential. But what if we could actually use 100% of our brain simultaneously? In reality, this would cause an overload. The brain is designed to function optimally, using different parts as needed. Using 100% of the brain at the same time could result in unsustainable energy consumption and excessive neural activity, leading to epileptic seizures or other dysfunctions. In practice, our brain already uses all its parts, but in a coordinated and efficient manner, activating specific areas for different tasks and processes. This organization ensures that we can perform a wide range of activities effectively without overloading our neural resources. Therefore, the idea of unlocking 100% of the brain is more of a science fiction concept than a realistic possibility. Understanding this dynamic helps us appreciate the sophistication and efficiency of our brain in its daily operation.